Hunt's fixation on winning made him an edgy character out of the car as well as in it. If anything stopped him finishing a race, he was a loaded gun. I'm a very emotional person, and um, people have said to me, there have been a couple of occasions this year when, when I got out of the car, uh, I've got out punchy, right? And people say, say well, you know, you, you, you can't flare up like that. And the fact is that I've bottled the thing up for four or five days completely. And so when you get a chance to let go, you've really got a lot of steam to let go as soon as you can, which is when you get out of the car. James certainly had an eye for the girls. Early on, I, th I think he was you know, a pretty faithful boyfriend. Uh, but once he got going, the motor racing and travelling, um, it all became frightfully exciting. And, and I think that's when we decided to go our separate ways, because I certainly wasn't the sort of person who would accept a boyfriend who was always off having fun. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my team with the legend himself of course, Mr James Hunt in the Heskiff Racing Team. We move on to round 3 of the championship out of 16 races and it's China. Ok let's see where we are at the moment, as you can see it's the 6th of April, wow there's a date for your calendar. We've got an invitational event coming up and some more running costs and weekly resources to get through before we reach the Chinese Grand Prix. But we're just looking at the aerodynamic section now because we have got 2 million dollars in the bank at the moment yes two million dollars so i think james hunt is going to spend that on some more resource point generation yes he's just going scrolling down to the bottom here and this is going to generate more resource points in this department and of course those are all important for getting uh, better upgrades onto the car so i think we're going to blow the budget now and spend it on this is he going to hit the button is james hunt going to hit the button for two million dollars well, he has done. There you go. There's the confirmation. So we've only got $19,750 left. Oh my goodness. We need to generate some cash pretty quick now. And as you can see from the development table, we are third from the bottom at the moment. So it's time to spend some of those resource points. We're just looking at what's going on in the engine at the moment. But the durability for the gearbox has unfortunately failed. So we've got to do that once again. That's only cost us 250 points. But unfortunately, I don't think we've got many left now to put any more upgrades onto the car. Yes, we're going to do a durability option here. I think we're going to uh, do a uh, internal combustion engine upgrade. So there you go. We've done that. And we're still third from the bottom now in the development. And just looking at the engine now, 36% wear overall. So it's looking pretty good as we go into the third round. Although the uh, ICE is at 53%. So it's looking pretty well now. So we may have to replace that for the next race. But at the moment everything else looks pretty normal, I have to say. Pretty normal, yes. Oh, only 17% for the electronics. So let's advance the time then and see what we're doing. But before we do that, of course, we've got to fill in everything that needs to be uh, done on the activity timeline. And James Hunt has decided this time that he's going to, uh, once again, fill this in manually because he wants to uh, take more charge of the team. He's put in a three-day durability department focus there. Now we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five days left. What's he going to pick now? What's he going to pick? He's going to go for a power equipment upgrade. That leaves him two days now before the uh, Grand Prix weekend. What's he going to do? Oh, a marketing strategy conference. Fantastic. Fantastic indeed. And so the time has moved on now to our invitational race and we are driving the Red Bull RB6. Well, I'm just going to leave you with a few moments now of some ear pull of this gorgeous engine.
Fantastic. And James Hunt has passed the checkpoint challenge as well. Well done, James. Well done indeed. Let's go back to our facility then and see what we're doing. Well, we're actually advancing through the time now. Oh, it looks like our upgrades have gone through without failing. Yes, yeah, so everything is done okay. Oh, yes, fantastic. So it's time now to move on to China, to the Shanghai International Circuit for the next Grand Prix. But just before we do that, we're going to sign with a secondary sponsor. We're going to sign with Avanzar, I think it's called. Avanzar. So we sign with them. And so there you go. We've got Avanzar now and XXY. And I think it's time now to uh, put those sponsors actually on our car. Otherwise, there's really not much point in having them. So we're going to go to the livery section now. And we're going to insert Avanzar and XXY. XY onto our car and there you go it's all been done so there's our sponsors our secondary sponsors which will be used now in the following races for the foreseeable future on our beautiful Heskiff racing car. So on to qualifying and we're just going to drop the front wings down a little bit to uh, 3 and 4 for the Chinese Grand Prix. Everything else stays pretty much standard. So out for qualifying at the moment you can see that uh, James Hunt is currently in 6th position I do believe. Yes, Lewis Hamilton has put in our fastest lap but at the moment Hunt's in now in 7th place. Is he going to improve on that as he crosses the line? We're just about to find out. The answer to that is going to be yes, back into 6th place. Wowzers, mid trousers. Fantastic. Anyway, a little bit later into the qualifying session, you can see we're down to 15th place now, but still pretty good, pretty decent, it has to be said. And of course, our My Team car. But we're going to cross the line now and see if we can improve on that and hopefully get a little bit higher up the grid. Are we going to? Yes, we do, slightly. 14th place, it looks like, for the race. Well, it seems James wasn't happy about that, so he just carried on going, in fact. And I think this time is a little bit faster, just a little bit faster. It may put him up. What? Yes, it does. 13th position then, hopefully, for the race. It's time to find out which driver is up to the task of claiming the Chinese Grand Prix. We're here in Shanghai. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position, with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Hamilton, Albon, Charles Leclerc and Verstappen, Sainz, Perez, Ricardo, and Lando Norris, Stroll, Ocon, Daniel Kvyat, Hunt, Gasly, Russell, Kevin Magnussen, and Kimi Raikkonen. Grosjean, Giovinazzi, Latifi, and Louis Delatraz. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. So once again, we form up on the grid, ready to say go, 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 as it's tune time for the five lights to go out once again on the James Hunt My Team Career Mode, and we say go, and it's away we go. 14 position for another rocket ship start for the line for James Hunt. Another rocket ship start doing very, very well. Now, of course, he's going to tuck into the inside line, going to China very, very tight indeed. And he gets around, gets past, well, I think that was Lando Norris. And once again, he's going around very, very, he's going for a move on Carlos Sainz. A little bit of wheel bang in there from all the cars, but he manages to sneak around the outside. I do believe on Carlos Sainz now, but no, Carlos is still there. Still there off to the left-hand side. But I think this time he's made it stick. I think he's made to get past. Yes, he does, but he goes for a dive bomb. Oh, Oh my goodness, hits the Red Bull, hits one of the Red Bull cars. This is pure aggressive driving once again from Hunt the Shunt. As we always know, this is what he's going to do every single race. He's just going to go out there and give it full beans. Yes, full beans. So up there to fourth position, fourth place for Hunt the Shunt at the moment on the first lap of this Grand Prix in China. And he's chasing Lewis Hamilton, Lulu, in of course the Mercedes car. Fantastic. And he's got a, a great work from his team mechanic as well, saying he's doing really, really well. And he is doing really, really well. Unfortunately, he's run out of ERS already, though. We've still got to uh, get James Hunt fully up to speed on this ERS system, even though it's been simplified for F1 2020. Still not quite sure what's going on. In fact, he uh, says it's just a lot of old bullshit. Yes, a lot of old bullshit, apparently. But anyway, we will persevere. He is a man from the 70s, after all. But he will adapt. He will adapt. I'm sure he will. And he's going to manage to work out this ERS. Oh, look at that. Look at that, everyone. There's some uh, scuffing on the side pod of the Heskiff Racing Team car there. 
that may have been with his uh, sort of contact with the Red Bull as he went through there. We've got a fastest lap from Valtteri Bottas as we go into lap two now. Still holding on to fourth position, but Hamilton seems to be pulling away. A little bit of a gap, a little bit of a gap uh, appearing from Hamilton. We've got Maxi Boy of Verstappen in the Red Bull now behind us. And we can see in the rearview mirrors there that he sort of... Uh, catches a little bit during the corners but we uh, seem to have enough power through the straights as I've mentioned in previous episodes this car has got lots of power going on a straight line but it doesn't seem to have uh, much sort of stability going into the corners anyway if you just saw there on the screen you can see off to the right hand corner we have got some uh, wear to some of our components now where they've gone orange so this could be a concern later into the race it could slow down our engine towards the uh, end of the last laps of the race and this could be a problem for us but anyway we'll carry on at the moment in fourth place for James Hunt Hamilton is now starting to pull away in the head you can see he's starting to pull away there in the Mercedes car he's uh, he's got a Ferrari ahead of him uh, that's Sebastian Vettel of course and that means that uh, Valtteri Bottas must be leading the race in the sister Mercedes car Okay, so James Hunt has got to see if he can defend against these Red Bulls, but already one's got past him. We haven't even got DRS yet. I think that was Maxi Boy. Look at this. He's in the middle of a Red Bull sandwich for James Hunt, but can he do the aggressive moves that he always does in the past and see if he can hold on to the position? And the answer to that is yes, he can. Look at this. Very, very late breaking from James Hunt there. Gets past the Red Bull. They're all squabbling behind, and he manages to hold on to his fourth position. Fantastic. Once again, another superb performance from James Hunt there as he manages to hold on to this fourth place. I'm just about to start lap three now. The DRS has now been enabled and you can see from the minimap that Hamilton has now pulled out quite a big gap, quite a big gap from James Hunt. And these two Red Bulls are still looking very, very racy and aggressive behind Mr. James Hunt. Very, very racy indeed. It's of course Verstappen and Albon is his teammate right behind him as well. But James is still holding on, holding on to this fourth position which is going to be a fantastic result if he can hold on to this right to the end of the race once again in the Heskiff racing car okay oh we've got a message from engineer the engine is looking worn so we now have wear to the engine and that is not going to be looking good towards the last bit of a race look at that you can see our new sponsor there on the engine cowling look Avazar there it is fantastic fantastic indeed so anyway, still on lap three, still being chased by the Red Bull Dynamic Duo, and that's Maxi Boy, and he's trying to sneak down the inside of James Hunt, but of course James is going to have the line covered off quite superbly there, still holding on to this fourth place. So let's hope we've still got enough power from our engine at the moment to uh, actually maintain this position. And he's actually pulling away, you can see that, look at that, down the straight, pulling away from the Red Bull there as I said this car has got lots and lots of straight line speed now just looking at the damage to the ICE 72% wear now on the uh, ice and we've also got 60% on the turbocharger as well so this is not looking good towards the end of this Grand Prix we just got to hang it out otherwise we're going to be using a, a single engine every single race otherwise so yes this is now lap four we're holding on as we accelerate forward now still on lap four we're still under pressure now from um, Maxi Boy of Verstappen but I think there's some cars coming into the pits yes two cars have come in I think that's Lulu and uh, Sebastian Vettel so now James Hunt is going to go into provisional I think second place yes lap. second place at the moment for James Hunt in the Heskiff racing car Valtteri Bottas is still out there in the lead and of course the sister Mercedes car okay it's time to accelerate forward now it's on lap five just going past the pits once again and that means the leader is now coming to the pits that is Valtteri Bottas but James Hunt decides to come in for his pit stop as well yes so in he comes and there's cars behind in fact lots of cars have come in on the same lap as James Hunt Daniel Kvyat is currently leading the race wowzers wowzers so in James comes for his one and only stop in his 25% race we swap over from the red sidewall tyre onto the yellow tyre and James Hunt I do believe is going to rejoin the field in ninth position yes ninth place he's managed to stay ahead of Maxi Boy Verstappen that's fantastic driving there as we accelerate forward now to lap six so still in ninth place for 
hunt the shunt at the moment. Teammate now is in the pits. Louis Delatraz has come in for his pit stop. Uh, a few more cars have come in as well. So he's now, oh, look at this. He's back into fourth position. His original sort of starting position after a few callers. And he's back in there, back in there again. Fantastic, after his pit stop. But you can see now on lap seven, we have some serious engine wear to uh, parts of the engine. It's now starting to go a little bit red there. And uh, we're still holding on to fourth place though. Not many laps to go now, so hopefully it should be okay for us. Hopefully, anyway. And so it looks like Maxi Boy is getting very, very close to the rear end of James Hunt. He goes round, oh, almost contact with the back of James Hunt there. Almost contact, but it's okay. He manages to hold on to this uh, fourth position now on lap eight. And you can see he's dropping back a little bit as we accelerate forward now to lap eight. Lap eight. And now it's time once again for Maxi Boy Verstappen to make his move. He's going to go wide around the outside, I do believe. There he is. There he is going very, very wide. I don't know what's going on. Why is he going so wide? Oh my goodness, I think he's got an engine problem for Maxi Boy. I think his engine has exploded. I just saw it on the screen there a little bit. We've got a yellow flag now and now we've got a green flag, so it's okay. But yes, Max Verstappen, I think he's out of the race. Yes, he's out of the session and we've got a safety car. Oh my goodness, a safety car on lap nine. Let's go to the replay and see exactly what happened to Max. Well, we don't really need to see, but there it is in black and white. Well, in colour, actually, but this... Maxi Boy Verstappen has an engine failure on that Red Bull car, so he is out of this race. So we're under safety car conditions, and it's now lap 11, because the safety car is now about to come in. We're behind Lewis Hamilton, the blessed one himself, of course. Now, James Hunt. James Hunt is going to try and jump Lewis Hamilton at the start of this restart for the race. It's very, very clear. Of course, look at this. He's just eyeing him up now. Just Oh, he calls Lulu to break very, very hard there. Very, very hard indeed. He's just toying with him. He's just toying with him. Of course, this, this is the two greats together. Yes, just think if they would have been together in real life. James Hunt and Lewis Hamilton. And as you can see, he goes for the jump on Lulu just as the lights are going to say go, go, go once again. And he's done it. Yes, but he gave the position back because he thought that may have been an illegal overtake. And Hamilton's got straight back into third again. Wowzers. And he's got to watch it because he's under real pressure from the cars behind now. He's got one of the uh, McLarens trying to get past him. I think that's Carlos Sainz. Oh my goodness, what happened there then? Yes, he thought that was an illegal overtake. So he actually backed off and gave the place back to Hamilton. But at the last moment, it was declared by the stewards that it wasn't an illegal overtake, and he would have been okay. Anyway, he's under real pressure now from a Ferrari trying to get past us. Look at this. It's Charles Leclerc, everyone, in the Ferrari car. But James still holds on to this fourth position. Hamilton still out in third, and Vettel in second place on lap 12. As we accelerate forward now, just going into lap 13. Lap 13, still holding on to fourth place for Hunt. Charles Leclerc now is going to make his move in the Ferrari. Is he going to dive around the outside of us? Well, it looks like he may. Yes, he does. But of course, James Hunt's got that inside line. And that means that he's going to have the better line for this turn. As Charles Leclerc has to maintain station behind. Fantastic there for James Hunt once again on lap 13. Now, of course, he's got, uh, he's got a little bit of fuel left as we accelerate forward now to the end of lap 13. Going into the last lap of the race now. We've got plenty of fuel left, so it's doing good for the last lap. And this is the last opportunity for Charles Leclerc. But once again, he's, uh, he's actually losing ground as we go down the straight and actually catch him going through the corners. So maybe we need to concentrate more on the aerodynamic department more than the engine for the remaining races of the first season of this championship because that is definitely uh, something that we are failing on because we are just not making speed through the corners but we are making it down the straights because James Hunt has been pretty obsessed with the engine power at the moment and not concentrating on anything else. Anyway, a few more calls to go. It's the end of the Grand Prix. Still holding on to this fourth place from Charles Leclerc who's still looking like an angry wasp right behind us in the rear view mirrors, trying to get past. He dives down the inside there, but didn't quite manage to pull that off. Okay, we have, of course, got the extraordinarily long straight, but look at this, Charles Leclerc isn't gonna wait for that straight because already, oh, he braked himself, had to brake very, very hard there for Charles Leclerc. He's lost a little bit of ground to James Hunt. That's given James Hunt the opportunity that he needs to gain some ground as we go down this long straight because, of course, uh, Charles Leclerc is gonna have the DRS and this is gonna be this, our last opportunity to try and get past. So there's a the DRS zone. But where is Charles Leclerc? 
Well, at the moment, well, I've just seen the rearview mirror there getting close, but no, we've just got a few more corners to go. If he can just get around his corner, I think it's done and dusty as Valtteri Bottas wins the race. And yes, James Hunt, once again, another fantastic performance. He's going to finish the race in fourth place if he can cross the line. And yes, he does. Wowzers. Absolute wowzers. What a great result for our Heskey Racing team there once again. Fourth place after the disappointment of the last race where we didn't uh, get any points at all. And James Hunt gets drive of the day as well. Fantastic. And yes, lads, the grid girls are back for the James Hunt career mode. Yes, this will upset all the feminists and all those blokes out there making sympathy videos saying they're on the side of womankind, when in actual fact they're just all dirty bastards like the rest of us. Yes, who do you think you're fooling, eh? Who do you think you're fooling, for God's sake? Oh, look at this, lads. Look at this. Blimey. Blimey. You know what I say, if we weren't meant to Google them, why did God make them like that? Look at the arse on that, lads. Look at the arse on that. Fantastic. This is what we need back in Formula One. This is what we need for God. Oh, look at that. She looks dirty, lads. She looks dirty. We like a dirty girl, don't we, lads? We like a dirty girl. I'm sure James is appreciating this as well. Oh, she looks well dirty, that one. She looks well dirty. I'm sure James is just absolutely loving all this now. Loving all this. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, so there's Mr. Toto Wolf, the Dominator. Yes. He seems to have a strange face this year. It looks a little bit too shiny. A little bit too shiny. And there's Valtteri Bottas, who won the race in the Mercedes car. Well done, Valtteri. And there's the team mechanics. Congratulate themselves like they always do. Yes. So, onto the podium then. Unfortunately, didn't get on there for James Hunt. Only just missed it, though, in fourth position. But there's Valtteri taking the first place trophy. And Lulu's up there as well. And, of course, uh, we've got Sebastian Vettel as well in the Ferrari. Fantastic. As the champagne goes over everyone. Wowzers, mid trousers. Yes, and they'd be wet trousers after getting covered in champagne as well. Not good. Let's have a look then and see and where we're standing. Well, it was fourth place Valtteri in the end Bottas for Mr. James Hunt. So, as Claire is giving the most boring interview in the history of the world ever, I'm sure he's going to get in her knickers later. I'd just like to say thanks so much for watching, everyone. <laughs>